the remote hmm this is a trick yes this might be the hardest because this one here what you'll be learning from this is how to merge different codes together you need to be able to read other people code and figure out at what point in their code you need to remove and then add yours now remember that almost every component that we use with the arduino um there is a code online for it for example this um this code here for um just for the ir you'll be using the ir receiver and the ir transmitter which you all have in your kit there is a code online and that would have been the first one i had asked you to run um, so now we are going to figure out how we need to increase, how we need to write this pro this function. You can see that this function here is a void function. It doesn't return anything and it has no arguments. Remember we spoke about that um, in class and one student had asked me what sense does that make? Well, you're actually going to see what sense it makes. So make sure you actually implement this properly. How does the remote work? Basically, if we have the remote, that's what we need to figure out. What's the basic operation of the remote? Well, what we need to do is get a value, get the value of the key pressed on the remote. So like when we um, press the remote, if you open up the serial monitor, you will be seeing some hex values. Each of the keys on the remote has a unique value so that you will get the program would know which, which exact key that is pressed. So we need to get the value of the key press. Um, then we need to check the state of the of the system that we have we need to know if our system is on or if our system is off so providing that we would have pressed the power button on the remote control and uh, the value for the power button matches the value that we actually have set in the code then we are going to check the state of the system see if the system is on or see if the system is off but what happens if the system is off well, if the system is off, what we want to do is to turn on the system. And when we turn on the system, we need to keep track of a few things. Well, we need to change the state of the system to on, so we need to have a variable that we call state, and we can actually toggle between them. We can set state as zero or state as one. In your code, I would have set state as a global variable as well, so you don't have to bother with that. All you need to do is use it. Okay, also, we also want that when we... um. When we, sorry, I think I would have made a mistake here. Good, yeah, so if the system is off, you want to turn it on, yeah, that is correct. And when we turn on the system, we also want to print a welcome screen. For example, um, system is on, as in the case of the code that you have, you can choose to um, write your own welcome screen. The other one is when I press the remote, the power button on the remote a second time, it should turn off the system. But first we need to check if the system is on. If the system is on, then we need to print a goodbye message to the screen. In that case, we can put git goodbye or system off. Once we will have printed that um, that well that um, goodbye screen, we can turn off the system. And when we turn off the system, we also need to change the state of the system also. So that originally, if the state was set to one, then we need to change that state back to zero. So that when I press the power button again, you're going to check it, see it's zero, it's not on, and then it's going to turn on the system again. So that's the basic operation of how the um, remote that you'll be, the remote application will be working. Okay. Um, in order for us to implement the remote function, we will need to borrow some codes. So remember that code that I had asked you guys to run just to test your IR remote? Well, you need to borrow this portion of the code, basically. All the other part of the code is already included in the empty shell code that I gave you guys. So this code here is what you need. And then you need to figure out which part of this code that you need to make the um, adjustment to. I trust that you guys would have read online to figure out how this code works. But let me just give you guys an overview. So what is happening here? Well, results does value. This captures the key press. So if I press power button, then the value for power button is stored in results dot value. So that when you open up the serial monitor, you what you will be see printing is this value here in a hex form. So now that you know that this has the this stores the value of the key press, you can start manipulating. You can start manipulating this value. Hence, the code that you will be writing needs to be written between here. So you need to enter. So you need to enter and let this part of your let this part of your code 
go down. You need to enter it multiple times and start writing your code directly below serial dot print um, serial dot dot print L. Now, how do I go about? How do you go about um, writing this code? Okay, then. Now, what you want to know, what you want to say is that if key press is equal to store hex value um, in the program, then you need to do something here. So, what you're going to do here, we need to check to see. Um, you need to write. You need to write a code that basically will be saying this: if key press is equal to the store um, hex value in the program then you need to do a few things so you need to have an if statement there and um, you will have need to obtain the value for the power button before it's a hex value you need to obtain that before and hard code it in your code and then you're going to say if um, you're going to say if serial if results dot value is equal to the hex value then you want it to do something what do you want it to do well immediately you need to write the line of code for this check the state of the system once check the state of the system meaning that you need to check if the state is zero or if it is one as i said before the state is declared as a global variable and i have it above in your code so no need to worry about that all you need to worry about is how to use state when to toggle between zero and one now if state is zero if when you check state is zero this means that the system is turned off and as a result you need to turn on the system okay so what you need to do well just directly at the bottom just write the necessary codes to realize this what do you need to do to turn on the system think about it sit down discuss with your classmates and then come up with a line of code to actually implement this once you would have done that don't forget to change the state to one now because before state was zero this meant that the system is turned off now that you would have changed the state now that you have turned on the system, it means that the state of the system has now changed from 0 to 1, which means that the system is on. So you need to change that state to 1. It's like a flag. You need to flag it, turn it on, and turn it off. So that's the first part here. The next one is if the system is on and you press the power button, then the system is supposed to turn off. Well, how do you realize that? You need to write the code to realize that objective then. Because remember, state when you use state and state is turned on it will actually realize that the system is on okay once you would have um write your code to turn on turn off the system don't forget to change state back to zero so that the next time you press the power button you're going to realize state is zero and turn on the system and lastly don't forget to include delays all right you could delay your system for about 300 or probably 3000 milliseconds in that case back at this code here Right here, you can change this here to probably um, 3,000. Good. Once you finish coding, this should follow, and then this should follow, and you are finished with your um, you are finished with your remote. Again, once you are finished writing the remote, um, once you are finished writing the remote function, you are going to run the test code you're going to uncomment the line of code that i have there for remote and test it to see if it's working if you get it working then you are on your way to implementing the system fully